speak a little bit about our experiences of uh, evaluating workshops. Lots of text. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of context first. So, the, the example I've chosen is our annual event called the Collaborations Workshop. The Collaborations Workshop bring, brings together kind of developers, researchers, funders, uh, publishers, and they all uh, we all come on a particular topic. It could be reproducible research, it could be interdisciplinary working, it could be software and you know, reputational credit for your career. So I think it's important to talk about the context. When you're, when you're asking questions in pre post pre workshop questionnaires, post workshop questionnaires, I think uh, context is really important. So what I mean by context is it's kind of the, the audience is a mixed discipline. Uh, obviously focus on software. It'll be about 80 to 100 people attending. People are attending in person. A lot of people have paid to attend, uh, and it's run over two to three, two to three days. So that, and this also comes up in one of the discussion sessions later about how how you ask things relative to how costly they are and where they are and who's involved, as it were. So what are the reasons? Well, really, we need to report to funders. We want to run work events, uh, and we need to understand what we're doing. So the type of questions, try to cluster the type of questions that we tend to ask. And they tend to, for pre-workshop questionnaires, we tend to get what we call standard questions, uh, uh, participatory questions, uh, which I'll come to, logistical questions, uh, and specific aims. I will emphasize this again, but I think it's interesting that the specific aims, the thing that you actually set out to do, we don't tend to have that many questions about. I'm not sure that's the right thing. Um, post-workshop, standard questions, uh, evaluating aims. I'm going to go through some of these in, in detail. So this is some of the sort of pre-workshop standard questions. So we essentially want to know who people are, what organisations they come from, <coughs> what research classifications they're in. Because we're funded, um, <coughs> we're funded at the moment by DBSRC, ESRC and uh, GSRC. But we also do a lot of work for people in NERC, uh, some AHRC, or people who do actual funding in AHRC and MRC. So we want to, you know, we're trying to build up evidence that we're actually serving particular communities. The questions in there at the bottom are not so much super, uh, it's not anything special. These are standard questions for us. Uh, what software do you use? Uh, what problems do you see where uh, better software could help? So these are questions that affect the mission, the overall mission, as it were, of the, of the Institute. Then the kind of participatory questions, given the nature of the event. Um, you know, what do people want to learn from attending this event? What specific things do they want to know? What things would they like to discuss? Again, this was, uh, this was also asked in the expression of interest for this workshop. Uh, and then how would they, you know, who would this take part, as we also asked. There's logistical questions in terms of people's diets, disability, um, you know, which parts of events people will attend. And you can use those as needed. I mean, it's useful for us to know the parts of events that people are attending and then some answers are relevant and some answers are not relevant. And sharing questions, you know, are you happy to have your details shared? You know, are you happy to retain audio visual material? Because sometimes people have like, you know, you know, various events, various different people, quite strong feelings about this. Um, I think one of the Institute staff also he doesn't like his picture being anywhere. So he has to keep his picture up. So be careful about that. And then it comes to this, after asking all of those questions, this this question here. And uh, it tends to be we tend to ask it like this, but obviously there could be variation. How confident are you in understanding a particular topic as you come to a workshop? How confident are you about being disability? Disciplines about um, how software and credit might work, and, and this is so that we can ask the same question afterwards and see if there's been any improvement. But there could be variations in there. You could use a different word rather than confident. Uh, obviously, the topics can change. You can ask this for different facets of what you're interested in. Um, it's tying into sort of for commensuration before. We're not sure if this is right. But we tend to scale things on one to five. Don't know why, we just do. Uh, as opposed to one to ten. Uh, 
Um, you know, uh, it's impossible to check valuation. Is it useful? We always ask, is it useful and enjoyable? Um, we always ask that because if, if people didn't find it useful, actually the usefulness scores tend to be slightly lower than the enjoyability <laughs> scores. So uh, I'm not sure what that says. But they both tend to be quite high. Uh, and, the diff and, the, and the different components. questions, and these are the embarrassing ones, well, we like to tie things in, you know, sometimes we want to this be optional, not sure. Um, you know, one thing that we're interested in is having a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, or multidisciplinary meeting, which is about something orthogonal to research, that affects research, cross research, it's very difficult to sell to people. And they come and attend such a meeting, they really want to attend every year. Social events, a social program a tour of a museum, some kind of optional hike for, for Edinburgh, <laughs> you know, those sorts of things. Uh, the venue, you know, the pace, uh, and what to tweak in the future. You know, the logistical things like the structure and organization of communication, you know, what did you attend? And also, um, kind of post workshop feedback. So, so summary, summarizing that experience, would they attend again next year, why, would they recommend it, why, um, get their comment on next year's theme, if we understand uh, what the theme will be, any recommendations, and also feedback for the use of particular technologies, so we use a, a, a Slack channel, which is like a sensitive messaging uh, application, to help keep people informed, because people are always like, well, where's the template, which room are we going to now, although, Incentives. You know, pre workshop, you're the king, right? You, you, you can ask friends. You know, people want to come to your event and uh, you know, they're giving you information. Fantastic. Post workshop, a bit more difficult. If they feel I think that, I mean, I don't know, but it's maybe for some of the just anecdotally and all anecdotes that I have used, um, people feel that what they tell you has an effect, the more likely it is. Also, we, we introduced this idea of, of, of prizes. Um, so we wanted to, if people ask, <coughs> whether we were interactive. I'm not sure it really increased our response rate much, but I noticed there was maybe one or two very harsh <laughs> responses. So I'm not sure whether it brought people out.
long-term post workshop, and we tried to do this with this idea of pledges. We didn't want to call it commitments. But throughout the workshop, people would say they would do particular things. And so we recorded them on this pledge page. It became incredibly difficult to track who was doing what, and did they do anything on it? And, you know, it was really hard. It was hard for us, because we weren't involved in it. <laughs> people as well. So, you know, but there's some workshops um, set out to tell people that if you're coming together as a community action we're up front tell you you need to serve with your time. Can you commit? We had a, a few people, uh, we had some people apply for the workshop who just really, they just wanted to know more about the workshop. They didn't really have much to come to the report. And some people wanted to take part. It was similar people but they wanted to contribute to the report. <laughs> Maybe it's not the right way to do that. But that was the little I got. Um, so I've got mixed feelings about in, in a more broad workshop, just kind of surprising people. You know, oh, by the way, you're now here. We want some of your commitment. It seems like, um, you know, it seems like a charity. It would seem like a charity event when you don't actually want to be asked <laughs> for money. It's a similar sort of feelings about that. I just want to end with this in terms of context. You know, many of the questions that we have about running the, effective, the event effectively, you know, they wouldn't, they'd be different if the event was smaller, or if it was online, or if it was free, or if it had different aims. Um, and there's not that many questions about the actual aim. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. I don't know. Um, you know, but we want to, what's driving us, we want to run a good event. If you look at the history of the, the Institute, <laughs> there's a point at which everyone decided they want to become a social scientist. Because, mm -hmm. because um, you know, Simon Hetrick, who leads our policy, he, he's got this slide that said, I'm a, I'm a laser physicist, not a social scientist. But you have to kind of become, know more about that area. And a lot of us have done courses to try and understand how to ask better questions and decide a bit about statistics. Um, but it's essentially, Thing, you know, if you really want to ask the core of deep down, is you know, if we're asking questions that are justified and you're getting a good response rate, maybe you're doing the right thing. <laughs> That's probably the basis of how I'm operating. If you want to know the actual core, obviously, you know, we always try to prove our techniques, but at the heart of it.
are really interesting because I'm curious to know if that, first of all, is a goal of what you're trying to do with these with these conference, and second, if there are maybe, because one way to use that would be to change things over years, maybe we add an extra mixer or some other events where people could talk and kind of achieve that goal, and I wondered if that was a goal and if that was one of the things that you were trying to use it for. I mean, that's interesting that you say that, because we, we just tried to see if it, because one of the, the goals is that it helps people who are less computationally aware mm -hmm. find better computational advice. And also one of the aims is to find people who are computationally aware to find interesting things to work on. Uh -huh. um, so, and it's also kind of moving computational practice from one domain, which is on a different adoption curve, to a different domain. So this it is, our, it is our goal, but in terms of um, knowing what they are, what was the thing you wanted to talk about? Mm -hmm. Maybe we should ask that as well, because it would, it would be uh, knowing if people have similar types of questions they might try what people, uh, it, what we should have. It strikes me as an easy connection to the actual creation of the event, right? So that you could you could use the data for something specific that you would then presumably meet your goal with more. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. I have a quick question about your confidence in your understanding similar mixes of confidence or lack of confidence in their own ability to measure their confidence. Okay. Everything might look like at the end. Yeah. So you will have kind of a normal distribution of overconfidence if you're really not even. <laughs> 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 kind of. I don't know, because it's like, maybe it's the language thing, because English is not my native language, so I tend to be a lot more direct. So if you ask me, can you pass me the salt, I'll go yes, and the yes, I can, because yeah. I don't get it.
fit open, they're just like, I don't want to ask any questions. <laughs> or, or they just put like really uh, ironic answer you know, just to, to tell you, yeah, you're stupid. You have to answer this question, but it's too much open for me. It's so probably. So there's also this, this type of not necessarily intellectual language, depends on the people, but also the type of. difference in genders where if they know that they can, they, they always, the applications on average are better because if they know they can meet well, the targets. Yeah. They're selecting out more than they apply. But men are higher. Maybe. Well, anyway. The, the problem with that.